Today we will learn how the MD5 hash function works in detail. A lot of detail. But before we get started, I am required by unofficial cryptography education law to warn you that the MD5 hash function is not secure. That is, it is possible to engineer collisions on the MD5 hash function. However, it's still useful to teach because it used to be a cryptographic hash function and it's simple enough to teach end-to-end -end in one setting. A modern hash function like SHA-256 is quite a bit more complex. At a high level, the MD5 hash function takes a 512-bit input and returns a pseudo-random 128-bit output. Of course, the inputs to the hash function won't usually be 512 bits. In general, it will be longer or shorter. The MD5 algorithm always pads the input to make it longer according to certain rules, but we're going to gloss over this detail temporarily. The core MD5 algorithm, however, operates on 512-bit segments, so that is what we are going to focus on for now. Here are some examples of the MD5 hash function in action. We can hash the string hello world and get the following output. We can hash the string web3 and get the following output. And we can hash the string rare skills and get this result. The output that is being returned is in hexadecimal format, and each hex character represents 4 bits, so the total output is 128 bits large. The motivation for hexadecimal representation is that binary representation can be quite large. Here we only need 32 characters to represent 128 bits instead of 128 ones and zeros. We now show how to interpret hexadecimal data. The hex character 0 represents 4 0 bits. The hex character 1 represents a 1 bit in the least significant bit and 0 elsewhere. And the same goes for the digits 2 through 9. However, hex doesn't stop at 9. It stops at 15. To represent the values 10 to 15, it uses the letters A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now let's look at how we would interpret this hexadecimal value shown here. The leading 0x just means that it is a hexadecimal number. To interpret this value, we'll read it digit by digit. E has the binary value 1110, F has the binary value 1111, and C has the binary value 1100, and so forth. Something we'll stress right now is that MD5 only operates on 32-bit chunks. So the 512-bit input gets divided into 16 32-bit chunks. And the 128-bit output gets divided into 4 32-bit chunks. By convention, these chunks are called words, so we'll be using the phrase 32-bit word quite a bit. The MD5 function uses the following bitwise operations to compute a hash. Bitwise or, bitwise and, bitwise exclusive or, bitwise not, bit rotation, and bit addition. Bitwise or, sometimes written as a vertical bar, takes two 32-bit numbers and returns another 32-bit number. The output will be zero where both the input bits are zero and one otherwise. Bitwise and, sometimes written as the ampersand, takes two 32-bit numbers and returns another 32-bit number. The output will be zero where at least one of the input bits is zero and one when both of the input bits are 1. Bitwise XOR, sometimes written with a caret symbol, returns 0 if both the input bits have the same value, i.e. both are 0 or 1, and it returns 1 if the input bits are not equal. A bitwise NOT takes a 32-bit number and inverts all the bits. Sometimes it's written as an exclamation point or a tilde symbol. Bit rotation takes a 32-bit word and an amount to rotate by and left shifts the bits by that amount. Then it moves that amount of bits to the other side. Let's look at an example rotation by 8 bits. And an example rotation by 12 bits. Finally, let's look at bitwise addition. This really isn't any different from adding two unsigned 32-bit numbers together, but we'll quickly review the mechanics. Let's start with a simple example, adding 2 and 3 together. The binary representation of 2 is 10, or 10, and the binary representation of 3 is 11, or 11. We'll start by adding the rightmost bits, which is 0 and 1. The sum of that is 1. Next, when we add 1 and 1 together, we get 2, or binary 10. This produces a carry bit to the next column. The carry bit is added to the two zeros to produce 1. The rest of the zeros add to produce 0. We can see that 2 plus 3 is indeed equal to 5. 
In situations where we have a carry bit after the final addition, we get an overflow. That is, we get a 1 bit in the 33rd position, but since our variable only holds 32 bits, that bit disappears. For example, if we add 2 billion and 3 billion, the answer is 5 billion, but we can't hold 5 billion in 32 bits, so we'll get the wrong answer. This is normally a bad thing because it results in incorrect addition, but the md5 hash function allows for addition to overflow. The most we can overflow by is 1 bit. If we add the largest possible 32-bit value to itself, the overflow is still 1 bit. The largest possible 32-bit value is 4,294,967,295, or all 32 bits set to 1. Adding this number to itself results in the rightmost bit being 0, and the rest of the output being 1. The MD5 starts with a hard-coded 128-bit value shown here. This is called the state, and it updates as the algorithm runs. When the algorithm finishes, it is the value that is returned as the 128-bit output. Since MD5 works in 32-bit words, we'll divide the 128 bits into four words. We'll give each of these words a variable name, A, B, C, and D. Let's call the current state A, B, C, D, and the next state a prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime. On each iteration, we'll calculate the next state, A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, and set the current state to be the next state. The update works as follows. C prime is equal to A, D prime is equal to C, and A prime is equal to D. Most of the state update is simply a permutation. However, B prime is the combination of A, B, C, D, and a 32-bit word from the input. Since this is the first iteration, we'll use the first 32-bit word from the input. We'll discuss later the combine function, but here's the output for now. Next, we update A, B, C, D to be the new state by setting A is equal to A prime, B is equal to B prime, C is equal to C prime, and D is equal to D prime. Three out of four of the values from the last state are permuted. However, B is a new value that is a function of the previous state and the first 32 bits from the input. We'll run this for 15 more iterations to digest the rest of the input. This completes the first loop. There will be a total of four loops. On the second loop, that is iterations 16 through 31, we don't visit the input in sequential order, but in the order specified by 5i plus 1 modulo 16. That visits each of the 32-bit segments in the input once, but in the order shown in the animation. On the third loop, we visit the inputs in the order dictated by 3i plus 5 modulo 16. And on the fourth loop, we visit the inputs in the order defined by 7i modulo 16. After four loops, or 64 iterations, our current state becomes the output of the md5 hash function. The output of the md5 hash function is the final values of a, b, c, and d concatenated together after being updated 64 times. Now we will learn what the combine function is doing. The first part is to combine the inputs b, c, d into a single value via a function f, which we show here. f changes its behavior based on the iteration. For the first 16 iterations, or first loop, it behaves in the manner defined in this block, and so on for the other three loops. Let's look at an example calculation for the zeroth iteration. We'll pass in b, c, d as the input, compute the output, and add the output to A. The plus here is a 32-bit addition, which we discussed earlier. The sum of A and F of B, C, D, and I is then summed with the current 32-bit segment of the input which we are using for that iteration. Since this is iteration 0, we get the value from the zeroth index of the input. The sum of A plus F plus the input segment will then go into this red box, which we discuss later. The output is the output of what we originally called the combine function. Let's run this sequence a couple more times so you get the pattern.
we can see that the output of combine is f of b, c, d, and i plus a plus the current 32-bit segment from the input, all passed into the red box. Now let's look at what's happening in the red box. The red box contains two addition and one rotation. MD5 introduces 64 hard-coded constants in an array called k. These are used for the first addition, and the value from k that we use depends on the current iteration i. Remember, there are 64 iterations, and the array k has 64 values. Next we have 64 constants that determine how much we will rotate the 32 bits by. Let's show an example for iteration i equals 0. When we get the result of a plus f plus input, we add it to ki, which in this case is k0. After adding it to k0, we will rotate that amount by ri, and in this case it is 7, so we will rotate it by 7 bits. The output of rotate is then added to the current value of b, which is efcdab89 for this instance, and the output of that sum is the final output of the combine function. As we iterate through i, we will repeat this process using the respective values for k and r. Thus, the combined function is as follows. We take f of b, c, d, and i, add that to a, add that to the input segment, add that to k of i, rotate that sum by r of i, and add that sum to b. And that's the output of combine. Now let's learn how we pad the input. As noted earlier, MD5 takes in 512-bit chunks. If we have an input such as rare skills, that is not 512 bits long. Here's how MD5 turns it into a 512-bit input. To pad it, we add a 1-bit, and we keep adding 0 bits until the entire input is 448 bits long, that is, 512 bits minus 64 bits. Since we have 7 rows, we now have 448 bits, which is 64 times 7. The length of our original input is 80 bits, which has the following binary value. This is the value we put in the final row to make the input 512 bits long. But what if our input happens to be 448 bits long already? We pad it with a 1 bit, but that leaves us with 63 bits to put in the length value, not 64, so there isn't enough space in this 512 bit block. We will instead pad the value up to 512 bits, then continue to the next block, filling it up to 448 bits of all zero. Here we have a block of 512 bits, and a block of 448 bits, for a total of 960 bits. The original length of the input is 448 bits, so we will encode that in binary, and add that as the final row, bringing the total size of the input to 1024, which is a multiple of 512. To hash this, we simply run the MD5 algorithm twice. This padding algorithm is always applied even if the original input is exactly 512 bits long. We still pad it to 513 bits, then add 447 zero bits, then we would encode the length of 512 as the final 64-bit number.